Welcome back to the third and final series of the three-part series for the Hunter, the Titan, and now we're on the Warlock, the top exotics for Arc Week. I wanted to save this one for last because one, it's my main, and two, I feel like there's a lot of exotics that are going to shine more than they ever have before in Destiny 2 once Arc Week takes place. Now let's start off with what is going to be happening. Top and bottom tree, damage is going to scale up to 150% over 5 seconds of continuous use of the attack. That means the more you use it, the more damage you can do to those orange and the yellow bars. Now we'll start with the top tree first. This path focuses prominently on chain lightning, but they also wanted to better sell the fantasy of being a god of erratic and dangerous energy. They wanted us to feel delighted and surprised by the chaos we are causing. On top of that, we should make the choice of using our abilities something to better strategize around and reward us for doing so. Chain Lightning Melee can now chain up to 5 times from 1. Each individual target can now be chained twice, but the damage is going to be decreased because you're going to be chaining so much more. It's going from 50 to 31 per chain. Now, the Arc Web can now chain to many, and they stress many more targets back and forth and in between, whatever, and they wanted to leave it up to us to find out exactly how many we can chain, which means it's probably going to be a ridiculous amount, and the range from that is being increased from 10 meters to 12 meters. Chain arc damage now reduces the cooldown of your grenade. 3% PvE, 10% PvP. We don't know if Risk Runner and other guns that can do that are going to be affected by that or not. So Risk Runner could be a key player in Arc Week, but we don't know. We'll find out. Now with the bottom path. Currently this path focuses on creating drone buddies for allies and staying close to them to dish out more rifts and the buddies therein. Generally, Arc Drone is short-lived and you need to stay close to your rift to keep it around. Now you'll be able to take your pal further, and if you stick with friends, be able to have it around much more often. And with a buff of 600%, they thought it was low before. They may have overkilled it this time. The rift duration is going from 15 to 20 seconds, and the arc soul duration is being extended by 50%, which means it's going to go from 9 seconds to 18 seconds once your rift ends. I don't know how this is going to play, but it may seem like... Tickle Fingers might be a name that is going to be retired once Arc Week starts. Now let's hop into these exotics and see how we can make it even more beast. Starting with my main staple, the Crown of Tempest. Before the update, now speaking, it gets 45 second supers easily, 8 to 12 second melee and grenades easily, but now with the 3% buff from doing chain damage and things like that, I just can't imagine what the recharge rate on this helmet's going to be like, especially with the plus 15 Reaper perks. Induction times will just stay proc the entire time recharging everything. Up next, an exotic that's a lot of the time slept on, Winter's Guile might be useful now, especially the collection tab version that comes with impact induction. Being that the melee has been nerfed a little bit because of the chain damage, the amount of damage you get with Winter's Guile, I don't remember exactly, but I swear I saw a video of a guy making almost rocket damage by wearing these, so it's pretty insane once you get it proc quite a bit. Another exotic, Ophidian Aspect. Nobody can ever hate on Ophidian Aspect. You get better weapon handling, reload speed, ready speed. All around just a beast exotic to have. That's why I kept it on this list. It has nothing to really do with Arc Week, but it does have a place in the list of top exotics. Up next, Claws of Ahamakara. Having those dual chain melees, they say they don't know how many we're going to be able to chain. They're going to leave it to us to find out. Claws of Hamakara with dual melees might pay off pretty nicely with this update happening. It just depends on how many we're going to be able to chain and how the melee is going to work and all that. But Claws of Hamakara, most people see this with the Void class, but I think it can also work with Art class just as well with this new buff. Up next, my top use PvP exotic. I'd use five grenade charge mods with these in Crucible. And you will always have Getaway Artists. It's like having somebody next to you with a pulse rifle going off over and over again. Getaway Artists are one of the most fun exotics that Bungie's made in a long time. If you haven't used these yet or haven't gotten them, you're in for a treat if you ever do get them. Just stack five grenade charge mods in Crucible, I swear you're good. Up next, the Vesper of Radius. I'm really curious to see how this is going to play with the bottom tree with that 600% when you're around your allies. Plus the increased duration of the Arc Soul. Plus the Arc Shockwave. Plus it has recharge when you're surrounded by enemies. These things have support and a beast aspect to them. And it's probably going to be going on all the time. I don't see an instance where you're not going to have an Arc Soul at your side with the Vesper Radius. The only time I found this exotic useful was during the Haunted Forest. If you remember that, it was when we had to go through the Infinite Forest when it was nighttime. How all the nightmares running around. It came in handy then. And with this buff, I can see this being a key player in Gambit. Maybe even Crucible as well, but time will tell. 
Up next, another bottom tree shiner would be Luna Faction with that new Arc Soul buff going on. I think that having the no reload when the boss phase happens with the Arc Soul damage, everybody having this on their team without reloading, this could be a good, a great support role with that new buff going on. Luna Factions is always a great support tool for anybody to have. It doesn't matter if you have anybody on your team with Luna Factions, it just increases your chance of winning in Gambit and survival anywhere else. And finally, has nothing to do with top or bottom tree, but Geomag Stabilizers are obviously just a good choice for the art class mid tree. When your super is almost topped off, just run a little bit and zoop, it already is there for you, ready to go. So Geomags, another staple for a lot of ARC users out there. And that is it, Guardians. Those are the top exotics that I am curious to test out when ARC week happens. Let me know in the comments what you're going to be using as well, and also don't forget about the other buffs happening. Gambit Prime weapons are now going to have an increased drop rate chance. You keep getting that increased drop rate until you finally get a weapon, then it resets again, then you get your increased drop rate all over again. Also, invasions are only going to count for 8%, coming down from 12%. The portal cooldown is now 40 seconds instead of 30 when you're trying to invade. And Gambit Prime will now count to unlock the weekly Gambit Clan Engram. So that's something new they're going to introduce to get you more power-up rewards to prepare you to get you to max light for the next DLC that I can't wait to see what that's going to be about for months to come. Other than that, Guardian, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget, send me that clip. I'll put it at the end of the video, get you a little bit of spotlight for that cool Sparrow trick, that one in a million shot. Whatever you want me to put, just send it to me and I will post it for you. Other than that, Join the Discord, hit subscribe, become beast. Let me know how you found my channel in the comments below. And other than that, I will catch y'all next time during Arc Week. Peace.